Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another epic video. Today we are going to be breaking down the 2015 movie Home in an exclusive media iceberg. If you haven't seen Home, basically it is the absolutely terrible DreamWorks movie about a purple alien, that's all you need to know essentially. If you don't know what a media iceberg is, that's okay, neither did I until like a few weeks ago. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the tip of the iceberg with more simple or well-known conspiracy theories and facts, and then descend the rabbit hole, going down and down the iceberg, every layer getting worse and more corrupted. I'm going to put time codes in the description and maybe on the screen if you want to skip around. And also, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm speaking out of a drainage pipe. We had some uh, mic issues, and the one mic that I did use uh, made it sound like I was had a really bad stuffy nose. So, um, this is the best we can do. <laughs> Stay tuned for more, and make sure to just prepare yourself mentally for what is ahead of you, and let's descend the rabbit hole together. Layer 1. We have arrived at layer 1 of the home iceberg, and we shall be reviewing relatively tame theories and facts regarding the 2015 movie Home that reside at the tip of the iceberg. As you know, the girl tip in the movie is voiced by famous pop star Rihanna, and the main boob alien named O in the movie is voiced by Jim Parsons or Sheldon from the acclaimed sitcom The Big Bang Theory. Not only these stars' voices are featured in the film, but lots of other famous actors such as Jennifer Lopez and Moore's voices are featured in this film. Now this is just simply funny, because for such a terrible film it has all these big name actors lending their voice. Um, to, you know, to, to voice what? Boobs? These purple aliens? Are you kidding me? So essentially what I'm saying is that the movie Home is obviously deeply connected to the show The Big Bang Theory because of Sheldon's voicing of the main character, which adds to the irony and comedic value of this 2015 children's film. Not to mention the absolutely awful collection of pop songs that play for pretty much every two seconds of this movie, and it is extremely obnoxious. I would play a clip of one of these scenes, but I think I will spare you from having to listen to the absolute agony and pain that is the soundtrack of Home. Delving into some relatively tame ideas and theories here, if you've seen this movie, you know that in the movie Captain Smek, the leader of the boobs is always telling the boobs to run away from all their problems instead of facing them head on, which at the end, the boob O shows them that you have to face your problems in life instead of running away, and that it's okay to make mistakes. Um, obviously this is one of the actual unironic life messages the film was trying to portray. If you can even say that this movie has an unironic life message, Furthermore, when all the boobs invade Earth in the movie, the alien O says that boobs are good at determining what is useful and not useful, and this is shown by the bike magnets, as I like to call them. When the boobs find the human's items not to be useful, they suck up all of that item into gravity orbs that float in the sky. Clean up group. What are the meanings of these strange magnet orbs? As you can see here, it is not just bikes getting sucked up. There are also a bunch of toilets stuck together along with other various items. Um, this raises a very serious question. The boobs must have deemed toilets as not useful as they are all stuck together in a bunch in the sky. Maybe I'm thinking too much, but if boobs don't deem toilets important, how do they go to the bathroom? I mean, it's not like boobs don't go to the bathroom, they clearly do, as there's a scene later on in the movie where O explains that boobs have a number one, a number two, and a number three. More on that later. So the boobs do go to the bathroom, yet they don't think toilets are useful. This is a paradox, and it needs to be addressed. Furthermore, the car that they use to get around in the movie is a flying soda-powered car named Slushy. Slushy. This is simply impossible. A car cannot run on soda, much less flow. Just imagine going to a gas station and filling up your tank with soda. I'm not an expert, but I feel like that would severely damage your car. And the alien O oh, just pulls us out of nowhere. He completely fixes up Tip's car and turns it into a flying soda-powered machine within a matter of minutes. What are the connections between these boobs and soda? How is this possible? Some questions may never be answered, but oh boy. We're just getting started, and we have so much more to explore. You could say that we're only at the tip of the iceberg. Let's take a dive into the icy cold waters of the home iceberg.
As the iceberg goes underwater, it becomes more distorted and convoluted. We begin with Home Adventures with Tip and O, the home Netflix series that was so bad it got taken off of Netflix. How fun! After the smash hit movie ends, let's get this show on the road! Basically, from what I can gather, there was this horrendous TV show called Home Adventures with Tip and O, which served as a sequel to Home to show what happened after the main story in the movie. I haven't watched the show itself, but I've seen a few clips of the show, and the art design is absolutely horrendous. There are different voice actors, I mean I don't blame them, I doubt the original voice actors from the movie would want to work on this project when it literally looks like this. Now I can understand maybe they had a really low budget and had to cut a few corners, but this is still unacceptable. And you know it's bad when Netflix removes the show. There's already a lot of terrible content on Netflix, so the fact that they picked this show to go, in particular to me, says something. I'm not really going to say much more about this show because I didn't watch it and I don't want to, but I must acknowledge its existence. A two-star audience review of the show on Rotten Tomatoes reads, a mind-numbing waste of a young person's time. If you just want to keep a child occupied, it will do. If you care about what enters their field of vision, take a pass. And that was the review for the first season. There were four more seasons before it was cancelled. There were four seasons of the show before it was cancelled, and I can't imagine that they got much better. Moving away from the home TV show and back to the acclaimed 2015 movie, there is one point in the movie that I want to address. In the Paris scene where the Eiffel Tower gets flipped upside down, lots of boobs are seen rolling off the Eiffel Tower island. Now this is just absolutely hilarious. The idea of all these boob aliens plummeting off onto the city below is very funny. And can we just point out for a second that it shows boobs drop into the water below, but then it cuts away before you get to see the other boobs that are clearly not heading for the water falling. It cuts away before it shows the boobs just like land on the pavement below. This raises the question if boobs take fall damage or not, and or is this perhaps the, not the family friendly movie it's supposed to be? Carl, a boob character, literally falls off the giant island and hits a piece of fabric that somehow saves his life. Carl, the boob, should be dead, yet he survives. For all the girl Tip knew, she was just messing with a funny gravity orb, but because of these actions, she could be responsible for numerous boob deaths. This makes no sense. Any boob that fell from that height clearly would have died, yet they survived. Like, look, here, O and Tip were hanging onto the edge of the Eiffel Tower, probably going at least 30 miles an hour, if not more, through the air straight through a pile of stone statues, and then they just come out the other side without a scratch. If the, It is an actual miracle. It is an actual miracle that the main characters even survive this scene. And the boo of Carl gets absolutely crushed by a giant gold statue. Look at that. You're telling me he survived that? Are you kidding me? And throughout the scene and the entire movie, you are constantly reminded of the Big Bang Theory because of the main character being voiced by Sheldon. This raises the question of how deeply connected the Big Bang Theory is to the movie Home. It might even be possible that the worlds are interconnected, and keep in mind that the, in the Big Bang Theory sitcom, Sheldon is a famous scientist. Did Sheldon artificially engineer these boobs into life? What is going on here? Somebody knew that they thought they wanted me, but they had to get me in to read for it. But I had not, at that point, read the source material. I had not... I had just seen a drawing of O, and I was like, oh my god, okay. I it is quite possible that the world of home is simply not real and it was all created as a parallel to the acclaimed show The Big Bang Theory, as the show's use of unfunny dialogue to create an effect is clearly as well presented in the movie Home, so is it really so far-fetched to say that this theory is possible? It's also just so annoying that all the boobs in this alien, more specifically the main character O, um, just talk like they're kindergartners and it gets old fast. Like, no, actually I think kindergartners probably speak better than these boobs. Like the character O literally skips so many syllables and words, it's, it's not even funny. And that is why today is best day ever. I guess they were trying to make it be like, haha, funny to kids, but frankly it's just annoying. And by the way, the names O and Tip, who made these names? You tell me. Those names are just a pain to hear and say. I'm sure you would agree. Another paradox that presents itself is what are the dietary habits of the boobs? What do they eat? 
There is a scene where Captain Smek eats a football and claims that the football is a fruit, which raises serious questions about the digestive tract of a boob. Do they just like to eat objects because funny? What are the dietary needs of the boob? These are the much deserved and sought after answers that need to be answered. But we have to move on. We must plunge deeper down the iceberg. We've arrived at the third layer of the iceberg and the sunlight from above begins to fade as the waters get colder and colder. Here we arrive, my friends, at the mobile game Boove Pop. Essentially, it is a mobile game that, from what I can tell, is a Candy Crush ripoff, but I just think this is pretty funny. I don't know much about this mobile game, but I've searched online for reviews of it and there are little to none, which makes it even more mysterious and surreal. Just look on Metacritic here, the game literally came out 5 years ago and has zero reviews. That seems sort of suspicious, especially when combined with the fact that on the one review I found of the game, it says that it's a 16 plus up due to in-game app purchasing, advertising, and gambling elements. This is pretty funny, as the game is directed towards kids obviously, and the website further says that the game contains elements of gambling. This game may contain devices which mimic those found in a casino, but the player is not risking something of value to play. What do you mean gambling? I thought this was just a Candy Crush ripoff home mobile game, but it appears that there's more to it than that. And then, with any type of media, there's the fan art of the movie home. Some of it is pretty bad, so I won't make you suffer, but I'll do a quick montage of it just to get it over with. Enjoy! As you know, in the movie as well, the booth Captain Smek has a stone that he has on his staff called the Shusher. The Shusher Rock is later revealed to be a Gorg egg full of Gorg embryos, but that's besides the point. The question is, how much trolling do the booths engage in? Why is it called the Shusher? Shush! And is this shushing that Captain Smek does when he hits booze with the shusher a variety and possible form of trolling? As you can see, the troll face is obviously connected to the movie Home due to the trolling exhibited by Captain Smek as he verbally and physically abuses the other booze, hitting them with the shusher and to straight up ridiculing them. Can we talk for a moment about the Gorgs? In the movie, the Gorgs are these funny looking aliens that are like the evil bad guys that are after the booze. Apparently, um, the Gorgs are actually nice, um, they just wanted the Shusher which contained all of the Gorg children and embryos, which are essentially just walking starfish. So the whole movies they are seen as bad, but in the end it's like, oh okay, I guess the Gorgs weren't bad at all. Or were they? Keep in mind that the Gorg Mothership is essentially a galactic warship and that the main Gorg's armor literally includes human skulls. There are literally human skulls on the Gorg's armor and they just move around in a giant galactic warship and in the end they just write it off like the Gorgs are still actually the good guys. Where did the Gorg get those human skulls? How are you going to answer that? Did the Gorgs use their warship to possibly conquer other worlds? Do they engage in galactic warfare? Not much is known about these Gorgs, um, but I want to know more. More on this topic later. But now, let's talk about what boob number three is. You calls it the number one. We also has the number two. Okay. And the number three. Okay. It is a good thing I do not have to go the number three. It would not be safe for you. Ugh. We only do's it once a year. I would not call it a holiday, but you do's need to take the day off. In the movie, O exclaims that for the booth species, they um, they do not only have a number one and number two in the bathroom, but a number three that is described as happening once a year, and that the booths essentially get a day off from work when they have this quote, number three. Scared. I almost made a number three. I don't even want to begin to contemplate what this even means, but I feel like this shouldn't be in a kid's movie. Is this just me or like, like what does this even mean? I don't even want to know if I'm honest. Moving on to another topic before we plunge deeper into the iceberg, um, what you fail to realize is that the movie Home is actually an Among Us reference. Think about it. The booths are short, they can be different colors, and they're kind of like a certain type of astronaut aboard a ship, a spaceship where a certain imposter lurks among the crewmates. Are the booths the imposter? Are the booths the imposter from among us? The world may never know.
we have entered the fourth layer of the home iceberg. Here the home theories and ideas get even worse, as you could have imagined. In the movie, there are these big brain boobs that look exactly like Megamind. Um, like that might sound like an exaggeration, but I watched this movie streamed over Discord with some people, and like, me and someone else literally said Megamind out loud at the same time when it first showed these big brain boobs, so clearly it's not a coincidence. The writers wanted to reference the movie Megamind. I mean, it just makes sense because both movies, Home and Megamind, were created by DreamWorks Animation. Another thing is the movie Aliens vs. Monsters. I actually no idea what this means, like in the list of things I wrote down to include in this video, like this was just one of them, and it just said aliens versus monsters, and I don't know what point I was trying to get across. I'm not even sure if I've seen that movie, if I did it was like years and years ago, and I don't remember anything. Was I saying that Home is a reference to this movie Aliens vs Monsters, because I'm pretty sure they were both made by DreamWorks? I have no idea what this even means. Um, I'm just get, sorry, I'm just gonna skip this. In the comments, feel free to contemplate how Aliens vs. Monsters is related to Home somehow. Another theory to roll off the list, Home is in fact an SCP. It's true. You may think that I'm connecting dots that aren't there, but I'm telling you that I'm not. You just have to take my word for it. Home is in fact an SCP, and the SCP that this movie most closely resembles is SCP-2399. I actually have to thank a friend for this, he's like an SCP expert, but um, this is the evidence. Um, if you don't know, but essentially SCP-2399 is an alien warship that is currently stranded in Jupiter's atmosphere. The warship was on its way to destroy Earth, but after collision with the moon, it is now broken. As the decades go on, it lingers in Jupiter's atmosphere, slowly repairing itself, and when it is finished, it shall travel to Earth to create an eventual doomsday event. As you can see, sharp and clear parallels from the um, movie Home and SCP-2399 um, can be drawn. Both of them are alien and are going to invade Earth. Furthermore, boob technology in the movie is highly gravity-oriented and engineered with some of the same parts used in SCP-2399. The only difference is that SCP-2399 is a highly indestructible craft with a seemingly mind of its own, while the boob ships are full of tiny boobs which are not indestructible. However, it is still reasonable to draw comparisons between these very closely related phenomena. It is even reasonable to propose that when O sent out his party invitation at the beginning of the movie, SCP-2399 may have received it. Another case could be that the Gorg Mothership is a reference to SCP-2399 as it is seen drifting through the solar system quite ominously and is essentially an alien warship as well. Speaking of Gorgs, the fact that Gorgs are actually starfish in this movie is obviously a big twist at the end and this could be a reference to War of the Worlds where the, um, the tripods in that movie actually had these funny looking creatures inside of them the same way that the starfish was hiding inside the Gorg mech. This further connects to SCP-2399 with the whole theme of alien warships invading Earth. Um, however, what is even more surprising about the Gorgs is that their language is essentially a mental breakdown, a cacophony of noises instead of formulated words. Not all Gorg speak has humans' words. But it turns out what is prevalent in the scene where the Gorg speaks its cacophony of noises is that O refers to the Gorg language as Gorg speak. This is obviously not a coincidence as the use of speak to the end of a word to describe a language is also in the book 1984 which connects home clearly to 1984. In the book 1984, the official language of Oceania um, is new speak the same way that the Gorg's language in the movie Home is called Gorg speak. In the totalitarian superstate of Oceania, Newspeak is a purposefully ambiguous and confusing language with restricted grammar and a limited vocabulary where words are shortened, simplified, or erased each year. The effect of doing this is essentially censorship or to, quote, diminish the range of thought. As the language continually gets smaller and less complex, so does the range of thought of all citizens, effectively controlling all thought and employed by the totalitarian state to control all aspects of life. As you can see, Newspeak and Gorgspeak are clearly related, as not only do they both have speak at the end of their names, the Gorg language is also a cacophony of noises. If that isn't restricted grammar with limited vocabulary, I don't know what is. 
So essentially, the writers obviously wanted to allude to 1984 with the use of the name Gorg Speak, as they must be referencing the apparent rise of totalitarianism in the Booth community. You may think I'm joking, but this part like actually makes sense. The Booth in general are very unilateral. They're all of one mind. They're all of even though they're separate bodies, they're really all of one body, and whatever Captain Smek says goes. And O, who I voice, he is fully believes in that. He's really enthusiastic about really being a boob and being the best boob he can be. But see, that enthusiasm itself is wrong for a boob. If you really think about it, Captain Smek's shushing of the other boobs by hitting them when he doesn't like what they have to say is a form of governmental and state censorship. Furthermore, all the boobs look and talk the same, with a few notable exceptions like O, Carl, and Captain Smeg. Part of the totalitarian state's purpose in 1984 is to control all aspects of life, which if you think about it, destroys creativity, individuality, freedom of expression and thought. Boobs all think the same. The thought process is running away from problems they have and when the one boob to question this, oh, has ideas about freedom of thought and facing your problems in life, they subsequently label him as a criminal just because he wasn't conforming to the societal standards that were put up by Captain Smek. They try to erase O and make him a fugitive because his beliefs don't align with that of the totalitarian state or Captain Smek. If that isn't a clear-cut analogy to George Orwell's 1984, I don't know what is. Some other theories about the movie Home point out to the fact that Home inhibits several hidden messages about population control and overpopulation. By the end of the movie, all the humans and boobs are living together on Earth, and this raises serious questions about the sustainability of the planet afterwards. The Earth's resources and land are already straining to support the weight of 7 billion humans, and now they added probably billions of more boobs. And even though the movie ends happily, it is hard to imagine boob and human relations will stay peaceful. After all, the boobs took the planet by force, and it makes sense that the humans might have a grudge against this, and also humans seem to be more technologically superior in terms of weaponry at least. If an international conflict was assumed in order to control the few natural resources that would still exist on Earth in the coming years due to overpopulation, it is probable that the boob and human war would begin, unless boobs move to another planet to decrease the stress on Earth's natural resources and food. Another crazy thing that I have to point out is that even though the movie Home stands at a reasonable 51% on Rotten Tomatoes and 55% on Metacritic, according to Google, 87% liked this movie, an audience rating summary averages at 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like, there are literally people here unironically saying that it's one of the best DreamWorks films I've ever seen, as well as more blasphemous claims that it is really a solid movie. Like in this video, I may be acting like this movie is the best movie ever, but I'm just saying that ironically. Unironically, this movie is terrible. That's why I decide to essentially make fun of it. I do realize that the movie is for kids, but at the same time, it still baffles me that so many people give it such high reviews. This leads me to believe that these are either bots writing these reviews or plants by the government in order to ensure home superiority in the hierarchy of films of all time. As you can see, there is a persistent effort of 5 star reviews of this movie, which if you don't mind me saying is kind of sus. But we can't stop here. We have delved into many theories, but we have to move on further down to the bottom of the iceberg, where things grow darker still. We have arrived at layer 5 of the iceberg, and by now the waters are beyond dark, beyond any recognition of any living thing. It is at this dark level of the deep ocean that we discuss boob reproduction. In the movie, the girl Tip is trying to find her mother, and O doesn't know what mothers are, so he calls Tip's mother my mom, even though it's her mom, because I guess the writers thought like, haha, funny, but it's, no, it just gets annoying. But um, anyways, there's a part in the movie where O explains that boobs don't have moms, and they just pop into existence. Don't take that part as verbatim, but I can't remember exactly what was said, but it was something along the lines of that. Now this raises more questions than you could possibly ever imagine. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but some theories suggested by colleagues of mine include asexual reproduction or perhaps artificial engineering. The theory of Boov artificial engineering aligns with a theory that Sheldon 
from the Big Bang Theory's um, profession as a scientist led him to scientifically engineer boobs into existence. However, this theory is less probable due to a scene in the movie where it shows dozens of baby boobs sitting on a flat surface when a bunch of food drops down and they consume it. Due to the nature of the baby boobs, that they're all aligned together and looked exactly the same, um, I have determined that asexual reproduction is the most probable form of boob reproduction. This would explain how all the boobs look essentially the same, but it also raises other questions um, such as how do they do this, as well as why do a couple of the boobs look different, so like, like Carl O and Captain Speck, they look slightly different, and if it was asexual reproduction, they would all look the same. Is there a boob um, gene pool? As if they're reproducing uh, asexually, they would all be copies and look the same, and such O and Carl and Captain Smith's different appearances would be impossible. If they do make copies of boobs, um, this would mean that boobs would be comparable to a parasite. Don't quote me in this because I'm not a scientist, but the only other species that reproduce asexually are bacteria, so boobs simply pop into existence and they don't have mothers they must be a form of bacteria. Also, the fact that they invaded Earth in search of a home or a host such as a parasite or virus finds a host is more evidence to show that boobs are a parasite or disease. Furthermore, what were these baby boobs even fed? It looks like a green sludge-like substance in which the baby boobs devour. The theory is that this green sludge is in fact the souls of the inhabitants of the worlds that they conquer. Much like in the game Doom Eternal, where Argent Energy is the Hell Energy in which the demons possess and consume, which originates from the souls of the human population, it is possible that the green sludge that is being fed to the baby boobs is a form of Argent Energy. If this is true, it means that the baby boobs are fed the souls of the worlds that they conquer. Speaking of conquering or invading worlds, the idea of boobs invading Earth is similar to the Covenants invading Earth from the game Halo. I have never played Halo, so I don't know what this means, but a colleague of mine who has played the game Halo explained that both the Covenant and Boob are alien species who invade Earth at some point and that also Halo technology is purple. The colleague also says, one thing to note is that the Covenant is not a single species, but rather a group of species. This makes it seem reasonable that the Boob could have been one of those species. As you can see, the invasion of Earth via Boobs is comparable to the invasion of the Covenants from Halo. Since the Covenants and Boobs are both purple, this raises the question of why are all the Boobs purple again? The Boobs are shown to change colors when they change emotions, but otherwise they are purple as a neutral color. The theory of asexual reproduction will explain why they are all the same color, but that is not a 100% proven theory and some other theorists have more radical ideas. It is in fact possible that past boob wars of the past have made it so all the boob colors were combined into purple as a result of a sort of ethnic cleansing. It is possible that once there were many boob colors and that these boob past boob wars combined them all by a combination and fusion of all cultures and ethnicities into the purple boob. This would explain why all boobs look and think the same as their cultures and ethnicities may have been combined and to add onto this fact that all the boobs have already been shaped into looking and thinking the same by the totalitarian state of Captain Smek as previously explained. Another funny thing that I can mention here is that there is a website uh, which I found part of the whole movie um, and after the movie ends, there's just 20 to 30 minutes of a glitched out picture of the whole movie with audio from How to Train Your Dragon. Giant flying skeleton. Ooh, ooh, the dragon manual says that the bone napper will stop at nothing to find the perfect- I just thought this was much worth mentioning because it's funny, but it is possible that Home and How to Train Your Dragon are connected due to the website glitching out like this. Furthermore, the scope of the boob technology is currently unknown. Have the boobs already gone through the industrial revolution and do they have access to nuclear technology? I mean, it is clear that the boobs already have access to bubble guns, gravity stabilizers, and starships, so it is not far-fetched to ask if the boobs have access to what kinds of technology and whatnot. What is the rate of boob industrialization? How does it compare to that of humans? Because even though the boobs have lots of space tech, the humans also seem to have lots of things that boobs don't, such as toilets and bikes. Another fact that I must throw into the mix is the generally barbaric dental patterns of the boob species that may allude to carnivorous behaviors. The teeth of the boob 
are already fairly confusing. But then some booths, you know, they're only shown with to have one tooth, and this perplexes the question of booth dietary needs even further. The main booth, O, has five teeth that are all shaped like half circles, and two pairs of the teeth are right on top of each other, which is confusing. I'm not a dentist, but it appears that the teeth of the boob species just simply don't align correctly, which could have resulted from excessive consumption of foreign objects like footballs, as Captain Smek is shown eating a football. Furthermore, this can allude to the fact that booths perhaps descended from some sort of barbaric or carnivorous animal, um, of which may have had cannibalistic behaviors. It is possible that the boobs may have resorted to cannibalism to avoid starvation on a world they inhabited, just like how the first settlers of Jamestown and the New World had to in order to survive their blistering cold. A few reports of boobs with sharp canine teeth have been recorded, and these boobs have been especially dangerous, comparable to that of an SCP breaching containment. The report is an eyewitness uh, transmission that was found coming from an abandoned lot. It reads, They're breaking in! We can't hold them much longer! The boobs are attacking, and then, then the transmission cuts off, and what this transmission could possibly allude to is still a mystery, but it seems like um, the boobs, um, if they have sharp canine teeth, they could have a tendency to attack, and obviously that is very scary. Um, you may have thought that this is the worst it could get, but you're wrong. We have reached the bottom layer of the iceberg, and the home iceberg has reached its zenith. We begin with these funny home concept art photos, clearly showing the darker and more sinister intent with which the people who animated home had. They depict an outlandish, unsettling, eerie depiction of the boobs from the movie. They appear not to be purple, instead with a white pale skin, bulging eyes, white teeth, and almost human-like hands. These nightmarish entities will forever change the context of the movie home and resemble something out of a horror film rather than a children's film. Akin to an SCP, these outlandish boobs are unsettling enough, but when combined with the rest of the iceberg's data and theory on boobs, they create a picture that is even worse. It gets worse, much worse. In the movie, there is a point where some boob music comes on the radio, which like Gorg speak, consists of a cacophony of noises. Song. It is called Motionless and Obedient. Very big. No, 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 no! Not in my car! As you can see, the name of the song is called Motionless and Obedient, perhaps a callback to the censorship and authoritarian government we know exists in the boob community. The song is called Motionless and Obedient, and it may enforce boobs to exist, as some say, in a perhaps torturous process. Boobs must be motionless, and they must obey. But when the audio of the seemingly boob music is studied, a more malevolent meaning appears. After hours of breaking down the audio file of the song Motionless and Obedient, a decoded message surfaced from the depths of the music. It plays like this. Nobody knows the meaning of this message, but there are those that have speculated it holds ancient and perhaps demonic origin. They speculate that is the movie home and the boobs that live within it trying to send a message desperately, like a lost message in a bottle, perhaps a cry for help that was never received. A cry for help from what? What could possibly cause such pain and suffering in a movie like this, meant for children? Grief, loss, death. The most prominent theory regarding the movie Home is that the movie is not in fact real. The girl Tip in the movie is shown throughout the movie trying to find her mother, which was abducted from the booths when they originally invaded Earth. While in the movie, at the end, Tip finds her mother eventually, many speculate that the mother in the movie was dead the entire time. The cause of death is unknown, but the theory holds that the entire movie is a coping mechanism for the girl Tip they come to terms with her mother's unfortunate death. The boob aliens taking over the world and everything happening inside the movie is not in fact real, and the girl Tip has gone mad in her grief and inside her mind. So mad that she made up a scenario, an entire world in fact, where her mother is alive. 
There are lots of signs in the movie that show this, from outlandish things occurring that would never occur in real life, such as the Eiffel Tower flipping upside down and boobs invading Earth. There are clear signs in the movie Home that this world is a fantasy. Brutally bright colors and lights show that the entire movie Home is a coping mechanism to help the girl Tib cope with her mother's death. When in the end, everything ends happily, this further cements the dream world that she has created for herself. In the beginning of the movie, Tip is found in an apartment alone, almost in a hideout-like room, and it is probable that she actually spends the entire movie in this room, going mad in her grief. Another dark theory surrounding the 2015 movie Home is that it is a comparison to some of the worst atrocities in human history regarding human relocation and war. In the movie, when the boobs invade Earth, they move all of the humans to a remote spot in Australia where they provide them with homes and cram the entire human population of Earth into a tiny area so that the rest of Earth can be inhabited by boobs. <laughs> Enjoy youth, frozen, sweetened, bovine secretion as we take the short flight to Happy Humans Town. Compared to the Europeans invading the New World, where the Native Americans were driven from their home and forced to move wrongfully, the same way the humans were abducted in the movie from their homes and crammed into a compact living space against their will. In the scene where O and Tip first meet, Tip says after locking O in a refrigerator, this is what you get for stealing planets and abducting people. Oh, this is what you get for stealing planets and abducting people. Oh, you are thinking a mistake. Boob, do not steal and abduct. No, boob, liberate and befriend. O replies with, oh, you are thinking a mistake. Boob, do not steal and abduct. No, boob, liberate and befriend. As you can see, the victors write history, and with Boov's dominating Earth, it is clear to see how a Boov like O can misinterpret the invasion of a planet as friendship. The words he speaks, however, are those of a madman. He tries to cover up the destruction and war that the Boov invasion hasn't caused by saying things like, Boovs don't steal and abduct, they simply liberate and befriend. As with all villains, they are the hero of their own story. Just like how the Europeans drove the Native American Indians from their home forcefully and against their will. These atrocities committed by the Boofs against the humans can also be compared to other atrocities in human history. People fear what they don't understand and fear the rise of those who they suppress. The Boofs were told that humans were unintelligent and childish creatures by the propaganda um, spout by Captain Smek. And out of this misunderstanding and a lack of empathy and perhaps fear for the humans, they push them away as well in a movement of mass human relocation shown in the movie. Finally, I'll talk about the final warnings of Home. The final meanings. The movie Home is a message in a bottle crying for help against the insurmountable grief of the death of Tip's mother. It is a cry against totalitarianism and can be compared to 1984. The movie is also very much an SCP and has sinister meanings in the way of barbaric boob, dental patterns, intergalactic wars, overpopulation, trolling, human skulls on the Gorg's outfit, warship, and just general suffering. The movie Home is a warning against the utter destruction of humanity, whether it be against nuclear weapons, totalitarianism and authoritarian governments, worldwide conflicts, overpopulation or anything else that would bring about the destruction of humanity. The movie Home warns about the dangers of aliens invading and uses this as a synonym for humans to learn from their past mistakes in history and make sure terrible atrocities never happen again. The movie Home, in all other aspects, is a deep and meaningful masterpiece of a film. That was that was, that was crazy. I can't believe I just did that. But you have any more home theories? Comment below. This video is a hundred percent a joke. Please don't take anything the wrong way. This is just a joke. I repeat, this video is a joke. Stupid video. I just thought it was really funny because I remember watching this stupid movie like five years ago and only just remembered it. And of course now the movie became ironic and therefore funny. I was originally going to make like a PJ Mass iceberg as a callback to some of my early videos about Nick Jr. shows that seemed to draw more attention. However, I decided against it because 
I don't really know much about PJ Masks. And after rewatching Home, I was so much more interested in it. I mean, like, look at this. I also want to thank all my friends who watched this terrible movie with me over Discord and also helped draw them um, and generate theories. In fact, a lot of the content in this video uh, was the result of the sum of um, me and my friends' ideas. Um, so thanks for that, and that's just about it. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Subscribe for more epic. Take risks, around, and the got flipped. Just